are 0.3 at 0.769. So there's about 0.3 minutes between arrivals. All right, so now we have the question, okay, so that, that makes sense. Do I want to be talking about this in terms of minutes or do we want to be talking about it in terms of seconds? Remember, whenever we're looking at time, it gets a little bit confusing because we're base 60 in time. So we got to be thinking, okay, uh, do I want to do I want to convert this into seconds and be talking about seconds or do we want to be talking about minutes? In this case, we'll convert it to seconds. So the mean second arrivals. So we're going to say, all right, I'll take that number times 60, 60 seconds in a minute. That's going to give us the 18.46. So now we're looking at this in terms of seconds. It takes about 18.4 second, seconds between arrivals. All right, so then we can look at the uh, x now being for our exponential distribution seconds between arrivals as opposed to the x for our Poisson distribution being the arrivals during a one minute period. So now we're gonna, we can ask questions like, okay, well, what if x was less than or equal to 60, 60 being seconds, so that being one minute? We can use then our expone.dist function which looks a lot like the Poisson.dist function, x now being the 60 in this case, and then lambda is going to be 1 over this 18.46, the, the, mean, uh, the, the mean seconds between arrivals. And then comma, the cumulative versus non-cumulative. In this case, we want it to be cumulative because I'm adding everything up, the probability between 0 up to and including the 60. Uh, okay, so we have that. Now we can also uh, plot this out. So if I have this, this is, these are giving us my rows and my rows for the exponential. Remember when I plotted this one out over here, this, this rows function, I could just make this 0, 1, 2, and then copy down uh, the, the rows, or I could use a sequence. And if you use a sequence, then that's why these two numbers are here because that gives you a little bit more control to change the numbers that you want in the sequence. So for the exponent.dist, we used 120. So if I go over here and do a similar thing, now with the exponent.dist, x now equaling the seconds between arrivals, we can then use our exponent.dist uh, function, which is gonna be exponent.dist, x is gonna be in this case the zero, but we copied it all the way down. That's what the hashtag is for. So it's going to spill. It's going to be a spill array, comma, one over, uh, over this for the lambda. And then, then the cumulative, this time zero or not cumulative. So it's not cumulative. So then we have the seconds between arrivals. What's the likelihood of zero? 5.42 seconds. What's the likelihood of... Uh, of one second between arrivals, 5.13, two seconds between arrivals, 4.86, three seconds, 4.60, and so on and so forth. So if we were to plot this out, then it would look something like this. So now we have it. This is the characteristic, you know, look of, of uh, an exponential type distribution. And sometimes I feel like the line weighting is a little less intuitive to fully understand. We'll take a look at an example next time. The, the example of like a radioactive decay declining for some reason that gives me an image, uh, which is another exponential distribution uh, situation oftentimes in, in another realm of like science and whatnot. But, uh, but that usually draws, gives me the picture of, of this. But the thing to keep in mind is that if you have a Poisson distribution, and you flip the question around, then you should get generally this uh, this exponential, and, which will give you a characteristic curve that looks like this. Now, in future problems, this is just another look of the curve, so you can get a fancy fancy curves within uh, Excel. So we'll practice formatting those curves in Excel if you want to work through the practice problem in uh, Excel. So so uh, we'll t and and so we'll also take a look, look at another practice problem to try to get a better intuitive sense as to why in these line weighting situations would this happen because because it doesn't sometimes it doesn't make complete intuitive sense 
you know, at first. Uh, so we'll we'll try to we'll try to break that out a little bit more in a future presentation, and we'll also take a look at it in terms of minutes and instead of in terms of seconds to get a feel for the minutes versus the seconds. The other thing to keep in mind is that if you were to ask a question such as what's the likelihood that you're going to get uh, that that you have zero up to two, you would think that you can you can just sum up the the percents, but I don't believe you can, it may not be exact to do that in the expone.dist uh, situation as easily as you could have done it with a Poisson situation, possibly because of the curve of the exponential distribution, possibly needing more complex math in order to do that. So therefore, like calculus, right? So therefore what you would need to do then uh, is use, if you're asking that question, you would need to use the cumulative function. So, so in other words, if I use the cumulative function to ask the question of the likelihood of zero to three, I may get a different answer than if I just summed up these four numbers possibly due to the curvature of the exponential curve.